Welcome to a Dry Bones Ministries special podcast series on the consecration to St. Joseph. My name is Father Adam Potter, and today is day 30. We continue our journey today by looking at St. Joseph and his great petition of patron of the dying. And we'll also continue our recitation of St. Peter Julian Amart's act of consecration so that this consecration day, at this point only three days away, that we can be as free to pray this entrustment prayer with our whole heart, mind, and soul. Well, if you're ready, let's dive in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. An act of consecration to St. Joseph. I consecrate myself to you, good St. Joseph, as my spiritual father. I choose you to rule my soul and to teach me the interior life, the life hidden away with Jesus, Mary, and yourself. Above all, I want to imitate the humble silence with which you shrouded Jesus, Mary, and yourself, and even your own happiness. For me, everything lies in that. Total abnegation like our Lord in his hidden life, making the world forget me by my silence and my practice of the common life. I consecrate myself to you as my guide and model in all my duties, so that I may learn to fulfill them with meekness and humility, with meekness toward my brethren, my neighbor, and all with whom I come in contact, with humility toward myself and simplicity before God. I choose you, good saint, as my counselor, my confidant, my protector in all my difficulties and trials. I do ask to be spared crosses and sufferings, but only from self-love, which might vitiate their value by making me vain over them. I shall honor and love and serve you with Mary, my mother, Never shall I separate her name from yours in my love. Gladly would I be like you, St. Joseph, a poor carpenter, unknown and despised, food for the roots of the tree, the master's gardener who never leaves the garden, who knows nothing but his plants, who loves only his flowers and sees only their fruits and dies in the corner of his hut in the arms of Jesus and Mary. We do not know the place of your burial, so we cannot honor your remains. You leave behind you only your mantle of poverty and humility. O Jesus, give me Joseph for a father as you have given me Mary as a mother. Fill me with devotion, confidence, and filial love. Listen to my prayer, please. I know that you will. Already I feel more devout, more full of hope and confidence in good St. Joseph, your foster father and my adopted father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> okay, well, it is day 30, and we were closing in on our consecration day, and I feel like as we close in, the petitions just grow in greater and greater gravity and uh, power. That St. Joseph is the patron of the dying is just simply one of the most incredible petitions, and in a lot of ways, it's been lost. It's been lost, just the gravity of this moment, right? That our whole lives, even seen in this short time that we have on earth as truly a preparation for eternity. At funerals, usually we have this great first reading reading from the Book of Wisdom where it talks about God having tried the soul and found them worthy of himself. That life is a trial in our time on earth and, and not a test as, as if God the Father is some school teacher looking over us, making, you know, trying to trip us up or catch us in, in faults. No, but it's a time of purification so that we could come to experience the fullness of who God is and to respond in kind. It's especially at the end of our lives that we come to this final test, this final trial. And it seems like we've lost this true gravity, this momentous occasion of the soul passing from this life to the next at the moment of death. It's interesting just how so many of us have stopped talking about death. We don't even call death, death anymore. We call it a lot of other things. And for good reasons, right? It's hard to talk about death. And so we talk about it as 
passing away or falling asleep and okay, right, I, I, I get it. And yet death is a hard concept and sometimes to be able to come to grips with it in just a direct way is helpful. I love that Father Calloway gave emphasis to the Latin phrase, memento mori, that remember that you will die in a sense that you must die, that you cannot escape death. And not in a morbid way, but in a way that keeps us always having this perspective that in the end, I want to die in a state of readiness, a state of grace, as the church calls it. Um, there used to be these great prayers that were said at the bedside of the soul who was in his last moments. And these prayers were often said by a priest. It was a priest who would then pray, calling on all of heaven, all of the saints, especially the guardian angel, to come and to protect the soul and to be with them and to keep them steadfast in the faith that presumably they had lived out their entire life. And that in these last moments, we're, of course, right, if we're honest, we know the devil is flying, seeking to trip us up at the very moment, the last moment of our life. And that we might have this sense of reverence. It's time to do battle more than ever before, to call upon heaven, to protect the soul and to intercede for it. And so to think about Joseph, right? The patron of a happy death. Happy, not in the sense of a comfortable death, but in a death of consolation, of being protected and of being reminded of what's most important. St. Joseph in this um, is remembered in this way, especially in our consecration prayer, just to go to this section today where we pray, Gladly would I be like you, St. Joseph, who dies in the corner of his hut, in the arms of Jesus and Mary. We don't even know the place of your burial, so we cannot honor your remains. You leave behind you only your mantle of poverty and humility. That Joseph, in his humility, was just preoccupied with faithfulness to Jesus and Mary. And in his hiddenness, in his silence, he died in the corner of this small house, right, in Nazareth, in a way that was so hidden. And yet, he had one of the most glorious deaths. Why? Well, in reward for his faithfulness, he was able to die with Jesus on his one side and Mary on his other. Right? And this isn't recorded in scripture, but this just comes from the fruit of prayerful meditation and consideration of the relationship that Joseph had with Jesus and Mary. What a gift to be able to have those two at his bedside. And so that when we pray, Joseph, intercede, pray for me at the hour of my death. That's what we're praying for. That you who remained faithful to the end were given the reward of the consolation of having Jesus and Mary. May I too have Jesus and Mary at my side too to be with me, to protect me, and to console me, to know that the Father who created me in love and by love desires to spend all of eternity in love with me. What does this look like, huh? This is hard to talk about, and this is where just like the gravity of this moment, of this scene, that's just not easy. And I've been blessed as a priest to be able to see, you know, these beautiful but painful moments of losing a spouse, right? Of losing, losing a dad, losing a parent. And these are just some of the most difficult realities. And it's, even if you know it's coming, even if you know like, okay, he's been suffering for a long time. This has been something we've been getting ready for and prepared for, right? There's just never an easy time to say goodbye to your dad or to, to say goodbye to your spouse. And even with the fullness of faith, even with the fullness of confidence that this man is loved by God, still that pain of just knowing that he's not going to be with me in the same way. That, that gaping hole that I will have in my, in my life, in my home now, that this is what was happening in this most precious moment of Joseph passing from this life to the next in a way that even heaven hadn't been opened yet. Right? Christ hadn't opened up the gates of heaven through his passion, death, and resurrection. So he went to the place of the dead. The church has called it limbo for a long time. This place of waiting. And even Joseph, in his incredible, glorious dignity, had the poverty and the humility of waiting. Waiting, in a sense, only for maybe three years. 
and yet still to wait with just a longing of knowing what was coming, what was imminent, and yet had to wait to be grabbed, seized by Jesus on that holy Saturday where he descended into the dead to let everyone know the victory has been won. This is St. Joseph, to be away from his spouse, to have to say goodbye. What were some of these last conversations like? This is where it's like, it's just hard to like really put it into words and to consider those last words, those last sentiments of love, of affection between Mary and Joseph. These two who had just given all of themselves to one another, but not just in a romantic way, right? Truly in a most agape, selfless, sacrificial way. They gave themselves totally to one another in perfect love for the Lord. It's in this that we realize their capacity for love was just expanded beyond what we could even ever hope or imagine. To be a fly on the wall, right? To be able to listen into those conversations is something truly to, to pray about and to meditate on. And then just how about Jesus, right? What were those words that he said to his dad? Just final words of affection, of gratitude for the man that Joseph is, for everything that he did. I don't know, even just to say, Dad, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Like my, my love for you is beyond what I can put into words. I can't wait to come and grab you. <laughs> I can't wait to come and bring the victory down and to bring you up to the glory that awaits you. I'm thinking of Jesus in uh, the parable of Matthew 25, where he talks about, you know, blessed are, are you um, who have loved me in the poor and the least of these. You fed me whenever I was naked. You gave me food whenever I was hungry. You gave me drink whenever I was thirsty. And the reward for all of those will be, blessed are you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and receive the master's reward. Did he have Joseph in mind whenever he was telling that parable? Like this great longing, like, I can't wait to be able to, like the good servant, like Joseph is the servant and the greatest of servants that we just laid down his life in all of the hidden, humble ways. Well done, good and faithful servant. Aren't these the words that we want to hear too? At the end of our lives? And all of the ups and all of the downs, all of our own failings and inadequacies, ways that we've just come up short again and again and again, that we would want to hear above it all, right? And are just striving to be faithful and are striving to love, that we might hear those words from our loving God and Savior. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and receive the Master's reward. If so, then we should pray to St. Joseph that we might have a happy death that we might be given the faith to hold on to and cling to the mercy of Jesus, that we might, this is a really important thing, pray that we would have a priest at the end of our lives. There's just no guarantees anymore, right? There used to be an abundance of priests, and now, now there just aren't. And that we would pray that we would have a priest to be able to give us the sacrament of last rites, to prepare our souls and to be able to give us viaticum, food for the journey, right? Food to be able to take into that time of purification so that we might be ready to behold the beatific vision, the glory of the blessed Trinity forever. And that we might have Mary too at our deathbed. Actually, we pray this every time we pray the Hail Mary, that Mary might pray for us at the two most important times of our lives. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God, now and at the hour of our death. Now, like right now, We're not praying for anything that's happened in the past. We're not praying for anything in the future. Just like the present moment. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. These most two crucial moments. It's with that intention. It's with that great desire just to be ready to meet the God of the universe, our Savior, to be with him forever in heaven, that we turn now and pray to St. Joseph with our litany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. 
Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph, most just, pray for us. Joseph, most chaste, pray for us. Joseph, most prudent, pray for us. Joseph, most courageous, pray for us. Joseph, most obedient, pray for us. Joseph, most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, Grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary, St. Joseph, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if you enjoyed this podcast, if um, it's been helpful, beneficial to you, please, I'd ask you to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment. Any uh, questions as we're coming into this consecration day, anything you're unsure of, um, I'd love to be able to help you out with that. As always, if you'd like to support the work of Dry Bones Ministries and see what else we have going on, please check out our website at drybonespgh.org. Let's keep one another in prayer. We're coming up close to the end of the consecration, and it's going to be so good, so worth the work, so worth the prayer and the meditation and all, just to be able to experience an even deeper love and devotion to St. Joseph, to be brought ever closer to the heart of our God. I look forward to being with you tomorrow. God bless you, and St. Joseph, pray for us.